In the online justice system, the people are represented by one person. That person bought a gavel on eBay. This is Kawaii Court. Dishonorable Judge Tyler Willis presiding. Today's defendant, emotionally immature parents who think their children owe them for belching them into existence. This court has found a prime example in the following bit of video evidence, introducing the defendant who we will call Cheryl. Nobody ever tells you how hard it's gonna be when your kids grow up and you know, they're not in your life, or if they are in your life, they're young adults who are, you know, disrespectful. This court would like to zero in on the word disrespectful. Specifically, this woman is talking like she's still supposed to be some kind of authority figure in the lives of her adult children. It's giving if middle management was a person. Please take note of that as we progress. Like, this is a time in our lives that we're supposed to be like the happiest, like we've raised our kids and they're in their 20s and it's supposed to be our time for us to be happy. The emphasis on the word us in this instance implies that Cheryl was unhappy while raising her children, which I'm sure they were completely unaffected by so long as she gave birth to vegetables. Regardless, she continues with, Like, why is it this hard? Why, when I feel like I was a good mom and did everything I can to show my kids I loved them and be there for them, and why, does this generation of kids just turn their back on their parents? So as the evidence shows, we have three major pillars here. One, the challenge to her authority that Cheryl resents now that she cannot control her children's reaction to her. Two, the fact that she seems to have been unhappy with the self-imposed sacrifices she made to raise them. And three, in using the words, I feel like I was a good mom, Cheryl firmly implies that she is either unwilling to actually ask why her children are distancing themselves from her, she has the listening ability of a bowl of punch, or the home life she raised these people in was so emotionally unsafe that her children dare not approach her lest she throw herself on the floor and start screaming the song of her people. Which, given that we're talking about a member of Gen X, goes something like, who needs emotional trust and intimacy with your children when you can give yourself a gold star for ensuring that they still have a pulse on the day that they turn 18? Unless they're gay, bi, trans, neurodivergent, or an atheist, in which case you can just abandon them in a Wendy's parking lot and no one at your church will care so long as you say that you prayed on it, and they technically have the option to come home so long as they stop being insert list of fixed characteristics here. You may as well tell them to come home the moment they stop breathing. But we've trailed too far into the truth in general, and returning to Cheryl and the issues she represents, the red flags we've seen thus far become particularly radioactive when she accuses an entire generation of abandoning their parents based on her anecdotal experience. I know it takes a special amount of delusion to see your multiple children children cutting ties with you and still fervently believe you were a good mother, but there has to come a point where she wakes up alone with no texts and zero missed calls that she has to think to herself, maybe, just maybe, she has the bedside manner of a bag of rats. She's far gone enough to turn all of this into some kind of intergenerational issue, and while this court would usually throw out a case like this in favor of having this woman committed for being the dumbest person I've seen this week, the docket is empty except for coffee stains, and I've never seen a person create coherent sentences with only a paperclip and chewed gum betwixt their ears. So we're going to continue this case out of a potent mixture of fascination and spite, and Cheryl goes on to say, I don't understand it, and it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. My friends, patients that I see at work, you know, story after story after story after, you know, my daughter doesn't talk to me, my son doesn't talk to me, like, just so much entitlement these days. Oh my God, Cheryl actually got something right. It is absolutely entitled to whine about your adult children not wanting to speak to you because you raised them like they owed you for the roof that you were legally required to put over their head, the food you were legally required to give them, and the clothes you were legally required to provide unless you wanted to spend an eventful evening in county lockup with an inmate who would rearrange your face free of charge, a service you would survive so long as you weren't subsequently fed your own teeth. What's that? Cheryl believes that it's the children who are acting entitled? It's never occurred to her that she's the one who thinks she's owed their time and attention, and said children only seem to want to be left alone? Well, that's a horse of a different color. Said horse's name is devastating irony, and given that Cheryl's high-pitched whining gets a little repetitious past this point, I'd like to finish off this video clip with two quotes. One, like it was so much easier when the kids were little. And two, 
where's the respect at for parents and appreciation for all they've done for you your entire life? To put it simply, Cheryl's closing arguments are really just a complaint about the loss of control she feels over her children outgrowing her legal and interpersonal ability to dictate their lives. She is upset at them for not praising her for doing her legal duties as a parent to raise them. And she is flabbergasted that her entitled attempts at guilt tripping them aren't proving as effective as she hoped. To make matters worse, she's taken to the internet to play the victim and cast her children as disrespectful entitled brats, thus deeply endangering any chance she has to bring them back into her life. Meaning she either has the mental capacity of a turnip or she's knowingly throwing a public tantrum at the expense of her children's privacy and trust because her emotional maturity stopped developing around the time she learned to tie her own shoes. I would say it's the latter and moreover that she's not an isolated incident. Because I'd like to assert that she is the poster child for a specific type of parent and in the closing arguments this court would like to make a point that I haven't seen on the subject that I believe will prove useful in the prosecution and sentencing of this case. And that is quite simply that emotionally immature parents are just like nice guys. They're always whining about how they did the bare minimum and yet no one's throwing them a parade. I didn't beat them. Why aren't I parent of the year? I don't abuse women. Why aren't they falling into my lap? And the good things that these parents and self-described nice guys do for their targets? they always come with a cost. For the emotionally immature parent, it's praise, attention, and a deferential relationship in which the parent gets the child's respect. For the nice guy, it's praise, attention, and an eventual sexual relationship in which the nice guy gets the girl. Both are foisting a non-consensual contract on their target for their own personal gain, and both feel a sense of entitlement that their desires be fulfilled. And in the instances where things do not go as planned, both parties are prone to metaphorically pissing themselves in very public forums. You'll notice that some familiar insults are quick to follow. If the kids don't want to spend time with their parents, well, they're spoiled little brats. If the woman of his interest doesn't want to date him, well, she's a shallow little bitch. Point for point, beat for beat, the emotionally immature parent and the nice guy are incredibly in sync. I would posit that their similarities mean that they should be dealt with in the same way. And that is, barring access to sufficient funds to launch them into a dying star, starving them of the attention they so desperately crave, and living your life in such a way that isn't beholden to someone who sees you as a debtor from which they intend to collect. Do not damage what little mental health you've managed to glean after being raised by the parental equivalent of a toddler with a driver's license, and rest easy at night in the knowledge that if you're dealing with a parent like Cheryl, you didn't ask to be born. You don't owe them a penny for raising the child they were legally required to keep alive, and you certainly don't owe your emotional time or attention to people who refuse to do the internal work of acknowledging or learning from the mistakes they made that hurt you in the process. You may not be their therapist, but the next time they call you, I suggest you bill them for your time. This court finds emotionally immature parents guilty of getting on my last goddamn nerve, and I sentence them to therapy and barring improvement, a lifetime supply of dying alone. This court is adjourned, and the judge presiding will now eat many a taco. I'd like to thank my patrons for making Kawaii Court a viable entity, and should you like to join their number and or become culpable in my pursuit of mass chaos, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews for more content of questionable ethical implications, and or random rants on things that distract me from the ever-looming void floating just beyond human perception. Don't think about that too long. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Woo! Behave yourself.